Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to match syntactic dependencies using the Spacey dependency matcher. If you want to use Spacey to match syntactic dependencies between token objects, you need to use the dependency matcher class. This class is available under the matcher submodule of Spacey. And as usual, to create a dependency matcher object, you need to provide the vocabulary of a language model as input to the dependency matcher object. So what I'm going to do here is create a dependency matcher and store the result under the variable dep underscore matcher. This provides us with a dependency matcher that's now ready to store the pattern rules for matching syntactic dependencies. Defining pattern rules for syntactic dependencies is a bit different than matching, let's say, part of speech tags. You need to start by defining an anchor pattern on which the entire rule is built. For example, if we want to match verbs and their nominal subjects, in the syntactic structure, we should take the verb as the anchor pattern. To define this pattern, we use a Python dictionary, as usual, and we have to provide values for two keys, write underscore id and write underscore attributes, or attrs. The write underscore id key holds a name for the pattern, provided as a string object that can be referred to by subsequent patterns on the right hand side of this pattern rule. The right underscore ATTRS holds the linguistic features of the anchor token. So in this case we simply determine that the anchor should have verb as its course part of speech tag. So this dictionary gives us the pattern for a single token that matches the verb in the pattern that we're building up. You can think of the rule for matching syntactic dependencies as a kind of a chain. And what we just did is define the first link in the chain, which is now on the left hand side. And to the right, we start building new chains that contain some criteria to be matched. So what we're going to do next is we determine a pattern for the next link in this chain to the right hand side of the anchor and we start by providing the key left underscore id which again takes a value as a string object that refers to the name of the pattern on the left hand side of the current pattern. As you may remember, we have the pattern for the verb on the left hand side as the anchor. So we need to provide the name of that pattern here under the key left underscore id. Next, we use the key rel underscore op to define a relation operator, which determines the relationship between the current pattern and that referred to using the key left underscore id. So the greater than symbol defines that the pattern stored under left id, that is the anchor, should be the head of the current pattern. Next, we use the right underscore id key to define a name for this pattern in case we want to extend this chain and define another pattern on the right hand side of this link and then we use the right underscore attrs key to define the syntactic dependency that holds between this current pattern and the pattern defined using the left underscore id. Then we simply add these dictionaries into a list named depth underscore pattern that we can add to the dependency matcher as usual. Then we apply the matcher to the doc object under the variable doc and store the matches 
under the variable DEP underscore matches. What we get back is a Python list consisting of tuples as marked by the parentheses, which contains two items, a space elexeme object that refers to the name of the pattern that we just gave to this pattern to be matched. So NSUBJ underscore verb, and then a Python list consisting of indices in the doc object that match our query. So what we're going to do next is we're going to loop over these matches and we unpack the tuple so that we take the first item in the tuple and assign it under the variable pattern underscore name. And then we take the second part that is the list of indices in the doc object and store that under the variable matches. We then take the list containing the matches and assign the items in this list to the variables verb and subject. Finally, we use the lexeme object stored under the variable pattern underscore name to fetch the name of the pattern from the vocabulary of the spacey language object. And then we print out a tabulator character to separate the output. And then we slice the doc object for the subject and the verb and separate these two by a sequence of three full stops. And what we get back is the name of the pattern that we added to the dependency matcher and then the matching pattern consisting of the subject and then the verb. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions about using the spacey dependency matcher, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks.